Dear friends, welcome to Know Thyself YouTube channel. Good morning. Hope you are all staying safe and keeping well. I sincerely thank all of you who have subscribed to this channel and follow the channel. If you find the contents of the videos uploaded in this channel useful, please subscribe to this channel and click the notification or the bell icon so that you can be notified when a video is uploaded. Kindly share the videos with others or on the internet. In this episode of Sunday Reflection segment, we present the homily for the seventh Sunday of the year based on the liturgical readings of the A cycle. The readings of the seventh Sunday of the year dwell on the theme being holy as God is holy. When the Vietnam War was going on, an associated press photographer took the picture of Kim Phu after her village in Vietnam was hit by a United States napalm bomb. The photo of the little girl pained the conscience of the world. The photo showed her two brothers who were instantly killed in the attack and Kim Phu then nine years old, running for life naked in pain and terror as her clothes were burned off because of the fire. Despite this horrible experience, recently Kim Fu, now a grown-up woman, placed a wreath at the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C., honoring the soldiers who bombed and killed the members of her family besides leaving on her physical and emotional wounds. After placing the wreath in the short speech she delivered to the silent crowd, she made the following statement. I have suffered a lot from my physical and emotional pain. Sometimes I have thought I could not live, but God saved my life and gave me faith and hope. If I could talk face to face with the pilot who dropped the bomb, I would tell him we cannot change history, but we should try to do things for the present and for the future to promote peace. Thus, for Kim Fu, there should be no retaliation in human living, but we must be internally strong enough to forgive and love those who have harmed us. The readings and the liturgy of the seventh Sunday of the year call us to live a life marked by forgiveness, love and holiness in imitation of our God who is forgiving, loving and holy. The first reading taken from the book of Leviticus gives the holiness code which contains the reason why we should live a life of holiness. The reason for our striving for holiness is the fact that the Lord our God, whose people we are, is holy. As God's people and his children, we must be as holy as God himself is. To become holy like God, firstly, we must not bear hatred towards our brothers and sisters. Instead, settle every conflict not by confrontation, but through straightforwardness and dialogue. Secondly, we must neither harbor any form of grudge towards our neighbor, nor be revengeful in dealing with them. Thirdly, we must love our neighbor as ourselves and act kindly towards them. In the second reading, St. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians, further elaborates on the holiness code of the book of Leviticus. He gives an additional reason why Christians in Corinth must live holy and upright life, so as to represent God's holiness in their life, and how they can achieve holiness. On this point, St. Paul says that by our baptism in Christ, each Christian individually and the Christian community at large has become temples of the Holy Spirit. As temples of the Holy Spirit, we must keep our bodies, minds, spirits and communal living holy so that 
every individual Christian and the Christian community can truly become the dwelling place of God. Hence, in order to achieve this God-like holiness, they must avoid divisions in hearts and within their community by getting lost in one or the other particular preacher of the gospel like Paul, Peter, Apollos or anyone else. Instead, they all must in all humility be united to each other and to Christ who would make them both individually and as a community to be God-like in their Christian living. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, Jesus presents his moral teaching regarding the principle that guides conflicts between persons and the principle that regulates relationship between persons, namely revenge and loving enemies respectively. Firstly, Jesus condemns the then prevalent ethnic law of retaliation which proclaims ethics of revenge as the way of regulating conflicts and confrontations between persons. A formulation of this law, namely, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, in a milder form was part of the ethics of Judaism. Instead of the law of retaliation, Jesus advocates the new law of love, grace, forgiveness and reconciliation. Using images such as showing one's other cheek, giving your clock as well, and walking two miles, Jesus points to the duty of a Christian to serve others with generosity, gracefulness and cheerfulness. For Jesus, a Christian should not do the good he does grudgingly and with resentment in his heart. Secondly, Jesus, presenting the Christian ethics of personal relationships, corrects the Old Testament law, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, and asks to love our neighbor and our enemies. Jesus wants his disciples to do this in imitation of the perfection of God the Father, who causes the sun to rise on the good and the evil, and the rain to fall on the honest and the dishonest. On the seventh Sunday of the year, the readings and the liturgy invite us, firstly, to pursue holiness in imitation of God who is holy. This implies that we live a life of right relationship with God by keeping our bodies, minds and hearts pure and undefiled so that we can make ourselves fit dwelling places where the Trinitarian God can make home within us. That we are constantly aware of our dignity as images of God and temples of the Holy Spirit and live a life worthy of our vocation as Christians. Secondly, the liturgy today calls us to build a community of love with our brothers and sisters. This implies that we do not hate, be revengeful or grudge others, but settle our differences with others by dialogue. That we do not harp on our differences and encourage division within our community or family, but instead make every effort to be united in mind and heart. That we do not let the principle of retaliation guide our actions, but instead we reach out to others with forgiveness in our heart. That we do the good we do not grudgingly or with resentment, but with generosity, cheerfulness and gracefulness. That we learn to love our enemies, pray for them and do good to them without the expectation of anything in return. As we move into this new week, let us ask the Lord the grace to walk in the path of true holiness, in imitation of God who is holy, by opening ourselves to genuine relationship with God and our brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. Stay blessed until we see you again with another video.